So I'm going to start answering those questions in the last training vlog and comments while I tidy up. And we'll hit with the session. Today's session will be some snatching, just a little bit, back squats again, and some single leg work. Yesterday I did a track session. I did like 12, 40 yard runs to just testing out the hamstring and going very moderate pace. And a lot of broad jumps or frog jumps. So I'm trying to get the full extension of the hip and get my knees behind my hip and also get used to the deceleration. So first up, just a comment from Jin Dante. He said, considering the strength the Irish fridge has and the numbers he has hit in the past, I think a 160 to 170 snatch is on his limit for sure. I realize that this is a huge weight, but seeing how he managed a 300 kilo squat, I wouldn't count him out on the snatches or clean and jerk for that matter. Psychological pressure is the biggest opponent Owen has. So that's pretty much, I think on the money. So, it's a funny situation to be in and you know I spent years chasing bigger snatches and cleaner jerks and and when I did my best numbers I was working full time like in pharmaceutical I was a QC analyst I was getting up at quarter past five half five most mornings doing an hour commute doing a full working day in a very busy lab I was very busy, I was good at my job and doing an hour commute home and then training, you know, and I was doing that for years and I hit my best numbers while doing that, 155, 190. And then went full time at Sika when I actually had more time to train, you know, things changed, I had more effort to put in the first year with Sika, I was training, then I discovered Jiu Jitsu and things, it was different and in my early years of weightlifting, I had a lot to figure out about weightlifting, I had a lot to learn. And the biggest things that held me back were, were knowledge, which, you know, ironically, or in the ways of the universe, as it often does, I ended up benefiting from that hugely because I didn't have the knowledge. So I went and seeked, seeked, went out and uh, suck out, suck out that knowledge. I went and sought out that knowledge. Me and Fitz, Fitz and I, we went to a lot of different countries trying to figure out stuff, you know. We went to Qatar, Romania, Germany, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. Fuck, where else have we gone for weightlifting? <sighs> See, I'm sure there's a few other places, but saw knowledge out from everywhere. When I go back a couple of years and I look at my lifting technique, I'm like, oh man, it's so bad. It's like, I could have been so much better. Uh, you, well, Ukraine, so many places um, that we saw knowledge from, you know? And I have all that knowledge and I still have the talent, but now it's, uh, it's a little bit different, I suppose. So funny how that goes. So, and I want to say this, without any hubris. It's just an observation of my capabilities is that I'm sure if I put, put my head down, as we say in Ireland, if I went after it really aggressively, I could snatch 170. But it's a, it's a monumental task, you know? I knew I could squat 300 and I'm sure I can squat more if I put the effort in, as the comment said, psychological pressure is a good way of putting it. If I put myself in that situation where I want to do it. Now, is a 170 kilo snatch cool? Fuck yeah, it is. Yes, it is, 170 kilo snatch. That is cool AF. But it is a lot of work. It's not a lot of work to kind of get back close to all numbers. But getting back and beyond, getting beyond old numbers, it's a bit of work, you know. I was, was on the fits about it today. And it's like, you know, if I could do it for two snatch sessions a week, like two snatch training sessions a week, then I'd almost certainly do it. But it'll probably be, at least three, if not four, if that, if, 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 if that was something I wanted to do. And, you know, as I say, I'm enjoying training a lot right now. And I don't want to put any big pressure on any goal currently. 
so that is just a consideration. So I really do, I don't think I could hit 170, I do, but you know, if I said something like I can run a, a 9 8 100 meters, like a, it's kind of a, a crazy statement without any proof to back it up, but could I add 10 15 kilos to my snatch? Yeah, absolutely. So, next question. Oh, random one. How would you recommend peaking for a strongman comp at the end of January? It has a 1RM axle deadlift on the rogue wheels, three inches higher than block. Higher block deadlift. It also has a log press and carry medley. So funnily enough, over the years, I've actually worked with a few strongmen and we've worked with some more, in recent years, some bigger strongmen as in some kind of higher level ones. And strongman, is no different to any other sport. So you push the strength and conditioning hard. Strongman is all about the big lifts, not the pressing. Squatting is so valuable. Big pulls, obviously, deadlifting is so transferable. Then we practice events once to twice a week. Kind of events are quite fatiguing, so you know we're not gonna do Atlas stones twice a week, but we might do some faster medleys once a week, and then you might do some heavier stuff later in the week. The log clean and press and axle deadlift, how would you peak for that now though? At the end of January, so we got about four weeks, is the, is the problem, our problem with strongman is oftentimes you don't know very far out what events are gonna be there. Now I know they're pretty good standardization, but there's kind of too many in your training to keep in rotation regularly, as I'm sure you're aware. So the issue is getting familiar with the lifts, estimating or realizing your capabilities, or getting a good handle on your capabilities, and then doing work based on those abilities, and then making progress from there. It's often done in a very short time, you know, two, three months. So for that case, the S&C work comes in really handy because general strength is really transferable. So when you get an event, you've probably done a very similar motion. You've probably been practicing log clean and breast, which kind of always stays in fashion. And then you end up um, hopefully transferring that, hitting a lot of volume like you would a normal lift and then slowly tapering off that volume and hitting singles along the way. What I would recommend for this, for the axle deadlift, is I assume it's a single, I don't think you said, oh, it's a one RM axle deadlift. So for this, get axle deadlifting. For you, I don't know. So let's say you haven't been axle deadlifting, you haven't been doing a lot of deadlifting in a while. I would do some, I would work up to, I'd get a handle on what you think your 1RM is and then start hitting some volume for the next two weeks. Well, you know what? I'd probably start hitting some singles now and some volume. So it's not ideal, but it's kind of something you're forced to do. So I do like a heavy single and probably some back offsets. It's not a great way to train, to be honest. It's not a great way to get the most out of your training. But unfortunately, you have to build capacity at that deadlift, assuming you haven't been doing a lot of axial deadlift. Maybe you have, but in that case, I would just taper into it. So like you would with a normal deadlift, so do your triples and your doubles, hit some singles, then max. But if you haven't been, I would do some moderate, very casual singles, and then do your volume work. And for the log clean and press, I would kind of treat this like a clean and jerk a little bit. So I would build up with some volume to a top single and hopefully that should cover you.
Okay, so squats are done, snatches are done. So in the squats, what did he do? Four by three or five by three? So it's very funny, very interesting, and I, and I knew this would happen. But so I'm down a couple of like two kilos now. I've uh, been dieting, I suppose, pretty aggressively for a couple of reasons. One, I just didn't want to be that heavy anymore. Uh, I want to get down on weight if I do jiu-jitsu competitions. It's better for the running. And we talked about, obviously, physique is something I'm just focusing on at the moment. And so losing fat mass. So I feel, I can kind of feel more room in my back. Feel more room up here with the grip. I can feel kind of more room in the bottom on the way down. You know, I don't think anything is particularly smaller. And I've been doing a lot of hypertrophy work, but it's funny how the biomechanical stacking changes when you lose bits of those mass. If we were talking, I remember to Shishiki when we were in Japan and we were all kind of asking him, we were like, did, did your mobility get worse or how was it when your biceps got bigger and you did more hypertrophy work for your upper body? And so obviously he was down to like 88 kilos from 100 and something when he squatted 321 and he said it was much easier to rack things. So even though his bicep mass was bigger, there's just less mass overall to block things so I assume the intra joint fat the fat in between my joints is leaving <laughs> okay so we're gonna do some step ups now the squatting feels good last set felt the best when I worked into it do some more on Sunday legs don't feel tired from that running I don't think my legs will ever be super fatigued from sprinting unless I do a crazy amount of volume or I do really high threshold sprinting you know, low rest times, which I probably won't be doing much of, given my conditioning is pretty good already. So, you know, if I was running, like Dara would try to do is kind of run several K or run a fast mile, obviously that's totally different, but I don't think the kind of running I will be doing will fatigue my legs so much. It's some, but not much. So let's do some step ups. I hate step ups, but really good for my hip flexor. I feel very, very beneficial. It's one of the rehab exercises I got for my knees. Last year, year before last now, 2022 from Rocco, if anyone remembers that video. So I need to get back on those. Can one back squat and one front squat session a week be enough to progress the leg strength when also weightlifting or is two back squat and one front squat usually preferred? For, for a lot of your first few years of training, one of each can be more than enough generally though two back squats is kind of the sweet number but for if you're new to weightlifting and you're not very strong now one should be enough especially at front squats you'll get that generality of strength from both of those squatting movements and then once you you know once you end up on the kind of I don't know, one and a half times body weight maybe a little bit more than that you kind of need to be starting to look at two times a week and one front squat a week Two questions. When will the revised beginner weightlifting program be up? That is not going to be on the app until probably the month after next. So the second block of horse is going up now. A few other blocks go up of other things. Conditioning programs are going up. It takes the development team not too long to do them, but so just to be honest, or just to be like clear of what happens, or we have you know obviously certain development hours contracted with the development team each week there are months they're very very good but obviously things get very expensive if anyone works in software or it or similar you'll know that the contract hours are fine but things get expensive if you go over those and we have to be smart with that you know so business has got to operate leanly while well, still having a good product so that'll probably be two months time i would say direct tricep movement we're gonna be doing a decline easy bar skull crusher every single tricep every single time i hit triceps i do one push down i try to do one overhead the overhead is going to target more of the long head which is the biggest chunk of the tricep it's the big piece in the back like when you're hitting this it's back here that big long one so of course you're hitting the whole tricep with this movement but we're going to be emphasizing that long head Actually, this one is, you know, this isn't like a direct overhead, so it's not going to be as much long. It's still, it's, never mind. It's getting too detailed in it, but this is a good movement. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm annoying. Learn to do this thing like, without a spot. Like, learn to get. To the bar and.
two sets like that because that that's a lot. <laughs> You know, what's interesting lately is a lot of the content I like watching is just kind of non-specific stuff, if that makes sense. So I'm not watching a lot of the fitness industry. Uh, well, I am, sorry, let me be clear. So I'm watching people like Christian Guzman's new channel, his training vlogs. I really, really like those. They're very enjoyable. Uh, they're just good to watch, to pay minimal attention to. Obviously, I watch a lot of you know, other stuff on YouTube, like jiu-jitsu stuff, hunting stuff, uh, science stuff, things like that. And I was, I go through phases of listening to geopolitics, social commentary, but to be honest, I just don't really, I don't like those. I don't like the constant barrage from those. So one I would listen to a lot is obviously Rogan. And I try and pick and choose the guests. He seemed to kind of return to a bit more normal, kind of pre-COVID Rogan in the last few months, the last few weeks, I should say. I think he's kind of realized he went a bit fucking mental. So there's certain people I listen to, like the AI guys, or someone else on where he just kind of shuts up and asks them questions. Uh, I like Chris Williamson, Zach's buddy, Modern Wisdom. His stuff is a bit too political, a bit too social commentary for me that I don't have room in my brain for it is the only way I can describe it. I just don't particularly care for it so much. I do keep aware of like politics and local politics and national politics somewhat, but if you're Irish, you'll know how largely ineffective that is. But I like some of Guzman's kind of relaxed lifestyle vlogs, you know. And it's funny in the comments, you see people like Sam Sulek influencing everyone. And it's like, bro, like, <laughs> brother, Christian Guzman is probably one of the OGs of people who does those vlogs. I watch Max tuning stuff, even though he doesn't really train anymore or he doesn't vlog his training. I like his kind of just lifestyle business stuff. It's kind of like a reality TV show, I suppose. Uh, it's very entertaining. Uh, that's why we liked in the shit talks. I think a lot of people like that where it's not serious. Like I'm not going to listen to, I hate most of those comedian podcasts. I just, oh, I just something about them. I never really listened to them, but any of those bigger comedians, it's funny stuff is funny. Obviously I like banter, but you know, when they're, it's like, they're always looking for a joke or something went up and, Nah, there's none of the, they're just, the, a lot of the comedians of podcasts now, except for Theo Vaughn, are kind of, kind of forgotten how they got there and who got them there in some ways, so I'm kind of like, ugh, it's painful to listen to sometimes, so I'm really enjoying Christian Guzman's new stuff. He got a lot of flack for that in his comments and his old videos from when I saw, because I didn't watch him in kind of years, to be honest. I watched the summer shredding like two years ago, now he's much more relaxed and definitely more Relatable? He just seems like a more normal person, to be honest. Okay, let me do another set.
Okay, let's do the last question. A couple of more to get to, but I need to do my cardio and go walk the dogs. I'm a footballer and my max squat is 90 kilos at 80 kilo body weight. Will increasing this improve my performance for such things as speed, jumping and physical battles? So yes, yes is the answer to that. I would say very, very confidently because it's a couple of things. So if we go with physical battles, uh, brute force is so useful for this. Having more mass behind your speed to engage in those battles is very, very important. So taking and receiving and giving out hits is very useful the more mass you have, especially in these relatively low skilled, not huge amount of precision hits, having that mass behind you when it's a whole body collision, so useful for field sports athletes. So the mass you get from squatting is very useful. And the leg strength, if you think about speed in pitch and speed in field sports, change of direction is applying brakes to your direction and changing that direction. So you need to apply a force in that opposing direction with your legs. So change of direction is heavily related to how much force you can impart on the ground. So you want to put that force in fast and turn that direction around, apply force again to the ground to change that direction. So you want to go cutting, swiveling back on yourself. All of that heavily relies on your force production because you need to brake and then accelerate again and change it around. The stronger your legs are, the better you can brake with skill acquisition, of course, and change that direction and go back in the opposite direction. So change direction, heavily related to force output. So squats would be very, very useful for that. Jumping to about two and a half times body weight back squat for a lot of people, if you, if you can even get that far, it's very beneficial for jumping. After that, it's a major diminishing returns. Even double body weight is a great place to get to, but beyond that is still good, but anything more isn't going to get massively productive. So I would say yes on all those fronts, especially considering currently you're pretty weak, no offense, just objectively, 90 kilos is obviously quite low, so you have a lot of easy room, low hanging fruit to make up. Finley Hayes, I don't know if you mean football as in British or you mean Gaelic football, but I, those answers still hold true. Okay guys, thanks for watching this vlog. Hope you enjoyed the questions. I love answering questions. Uh, pretty interesting training today. So a lot of my training at the moment is just nice and chill. I'm kind of even zoned out at the start of some sessions. I'm not even kind of thinking about it. So like changing to snatches first over back squats messed up my brain a little bit because I was in such a habit of doing squats first. My brain is kind of like, oh, wait, what's going on here? What the fuck are you doing? So funny like that. So I'm not hyped. I had food before this, like 15 minutes before. I cannot usually eat right before training. It's never been an issue, but just chilling, putting my son to bed, changing him. And you know, it's nice. I'm really enjoying it. I'm loving the upper body sessions, those bodybuilding sessions. So obviously the lower body stuff, bit more intense because I'm doing squatting and snatching and stuff. So there's a little bit more thought to them. The running stuff, super novel, no idea what's really happening yet in my brain. So they're kind of more like I'm going to the track. I'm still getting used to new environments. I'm like, who's going to be there? What's going on? You know, all these things you think of as a human, you're just like new skills. I know what to do, but I have to go do it now. It's very interesting. It's not like I'm telling someone, telling a sprinter, uh, bobsleigh athlete, a, a rugby player, a soccer player. You're like, this is what you go do. And, and I know it works, but it's interesting going doing it yourself. You know, you're like, oh, I'm going to the track today. I'm going before work. What time do I need to get there? Who's going to be at the track? Can I video at the track? Let's not video today. Let's see who's there. What's the weather like? All these questions, you know, and they're, I'm not anxious about them. I'm not nervous. It's just new stuff, you know, and you're calculating new stuff and you're thinking about new things, which is always quite interesting. So, which is great. I think it's very, very beneficial. It's like going to Jiu Jitsu the first time or going weightlifting the first time. Now, obviously when I go weightlifting anywhere, there's no problem. I go to gyms, there's no problem. The environment is, is my swamp. 
and I am the Swamp King. <laughs> but uh, when it comes to new stuff, it's great. I think it's so good for you as a person to do stuff like that. So overall, it's great. Looking forward to the weather being warmer, I'm not gonna lie. Big secret no one will tell you is that weightlifting in colder countries is a nightmare unless you've great heating. It's, of all things, weightlifting is, is bollocks in the cold. So, just tipping away at that. Rack a bar again, no pain. Wrist is massively better. So, still some pain in the rack, like I couldn't rack 70 kilos there, but I can rack an empty bar, no pain at all, which is fantastic, and I can press mostly overhead, so really getting there. Crazy how fast that healed. Um, yeah, just like magic really. Just got better, way faster. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? So thanks for watching. Thanks for your questions. We'll do another one of these in a few weeks, I'll let you know. But I'm gonna keep uploading the vlogs. And I hope you have a lovely start to the year. Check out the 16 training tips. Stuff holds true every year, but get on it this year and get moving. Thanks, guys.